Hey, welcome back to the channel, team man. As always, I'm stoked to see you. So I had a request uh, to bump up in the notch, if you will, a, a section of, or area for the study guide that we've been working on, and that's to go over rifle and carbine. Hey, that's what this channel is all about. Right? It's all about professional development. It's all about, about giving you things and putting things into your kit bag that quite frankly, I had to learn the hard way. And if that's what you're into as well, man, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you can stay up to date on some future content. So in this video, I'm gonna give you actual board questions. Coming at you from a board member. I've sat on more boards than I can shake a stick at. And I, I hear up and down the halls with people, uh, up and down the aisle, or up and down the table, if you will, of, of what my peers have been asking. Of course, I've been through myself, you know, promotion boards, uh, Sergeant Audie Murphy board, and NCO of the Year, of the, the year board. So I, I feel where you're coming from, and I know all the short notice. I'm going to give you a few of the top, these are the, the probably the top most common standard board questions and then I'm gonna give you some, uh, so, some food for thought on some situational questions that you could be faced about this subject area for rifle and carbine, right? And uh, make sure you, you leave some comments down below. I'll give you a few nuggets along the way as well. And so what I'll do is I'll ask you the question. Uh, I'll give you just a second or, or so to pause the video if you want. That way you can answer the video. And then I'll give you the, the book answer and then uh, any other tips along the way, and then we'll go on to the next question. How does that sound? That sounds sick and awesome. Let's do this. So, question numero uno. What are the four rules of firearm safety? Right, so of course the four firearm safety rules, and I'm actually gonna give you a five, because that's how I roll. I'm gonna treat every weapon as if it was loaded. Never point your weapon at anything you do not intend to shoot. Keep your weapon on safe until you're ready to fire and keep your finger off the trigger until you intend to fire. And uh, number five, the fifth one, FYI, is be sure of your target and what lies beyond. On that note, let's have a little shout out from our sponsor. <laughs> Yes. Right, so question number two. What are the weapon firearm statuses? So of course I'm talking about colors and we're talking about red, amber, and green. And you should know what all three of these are, right? Uh, green being your weapon is, is completely safe, right? There's no uh, magazine inserted, no round in, in the chamber. Um, Amber, your magazine is locked, bolts forward on an empty chamber, right? And of course, your ejection port cover is closed. And red, magazine is inserted, bolts forward on uh, uh, with, with a round in the chamber. And of course, on all of these, your, your weapon is unsafe, right? And ejection port cover closed. You'll notice along the way, like I haven't, I didn't ask you what is the, the regulation covering uh, rifle and carbine. Because that's, that's just too easy, but you need to know that. And as you're answering a question, you could say, uh, just say, uh, you know, for example, you know, what are the weapon uh, safety statuses? First sergeant, according to TC 3-22.9, the weapon statuses are, boom, man, you see what you did there? Come on now, man, that's pumped me up. Because what it's doing is it's, is it's, it's telling me as a board member that you're giving me a little bit more than what I want, but it's exactly what I want to hear. And that's a good thing to do, to give a little bit more, to, 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 to give a scenario, even if you will. Don't waste, don't, don't waste a board member's time. It's a good thing to do that, right? It's a good thing to do that. Next question is, what is the functioning cycle of the M4 and the M16? All right, so that's feeding chambering, locking, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, and cocking. Boom. <laughs> uh, what does PMI stand for? It's preliminary marksmanship instruction. And it's something that you should get every single time you go to the range. Every single time. It's just like, 
you know, given uh, uh, APFT instructions before we give APFT. Man, I've heard it a thousand times. I don't care how many times you've heard it because you've heard it wrong every single time. So that's why we do PMI every single time. And if you're an NCO, man, you owe it to your soldiers to do this. So, uh, you know, what, what does PMI stand for, specialist or sergeant? For sergeant, PMI stands for preliminary marksmanship instruction. And it's what I owe every single soldier before they're going to the range, especially now as we're transitioning to the new tables. Mm. Double up. Mm. Mm. Describe the M16 <laughs> service rifle. I'm going to give you a few things here, you know, like it's, it's magazine fed, gas uh, operated, air cooled, shoulder fired. Of course, it's 5.56 uh, millimeter weapon. You could add in and throw in weight, um, rates of fire, max effective range, which you should know. What's the max effective range on an M16A2 service rifle? On a point target, it's 550 meters. On an area target, it's 800 meters. These are things that you should just know in your head. Of course, you probably need to know these for the M4. I should too. Not off the top of my head, but I know where to look, right? Looking 3 22.9. What are the three classifications that threats must be positively identified as? And you're thinking, first sergeant, what, what did you just ask? So, how do you say that? First sergeant, can you rephrase your question? Certainly, sergeant. What are the three classification threats must be positively identified as? Right, so that's the exact same way I just asked you the question. And odds are, depending on the question, I'm not gonna rephrase my question. I'm gonna say it the exact same way again <laughs> because I wanna, I'm, that, that's how I roll. But I may rephrase the question and that's a, that's a way to do it. So just remember, if you ask me to restate the question, I'm going to restate the question the exact same way that I asked. If you ask a board member to rephrase the question, it may give your, your uh, Rolodex in your mind that you've been studying a little bit more time to flip to that three by five card in your head, right? Um, so I could say, which will give you more time to come up with the answer. And so I could rephrase this question such as, how should we identify possible threats? There are three different categories, if you will. What are they? Three different classifications of targets are friendly, foe, and non-combatant. And you notice how I answered that right there, right? With, with restating, rephrasing part of the question in with my answer. Do that. Don't just say friendly, foe, non-combatant. Because as soon as you do that, man, I'm gonna come back with another question. So sl slow it down. This is your board. I'm actually here because of you. Because of you, is this your board? You're not sitting on my board. What does the acronym SPORTS stand for? All right, so SPORTS, of course, stands for uh, slap, pull, observe. What are you observing, Sergeant? I'm observing the chamber to make sure that there is a round uh, fed into the chamber to make sure I don't have a double feed or, or an, an issue in, with my extraction, right? And then I'm going to release uh, my charging handle, tap, and then squeeze the trigger. What, what is immediate action? Right, so immediate action is, you could, you could answer this two ways, right? So immediate action are the actions that you perform on your weapon when you have a, a stoppage or malfunction to immediately get it back into the fight. And what you do is tap, rack, bang, right? Uh, because you don't have time to, to troubleshoot. And when, when you're doing uh, sports, you, you're doing remedial action, if you will. You're taking a time, you're taking a, a two second pause to see what that malfunction is in your weapon, in, the, in that cycle of operations that we were talking about earlier. That's why it's important to know what the cycle of operations is, because there are a couple key moments within that cycle of operation where your stoppages and your malfunctions are going to happen every single time. Most notably, it's extracting and ejecting. Uh, so th those are the, the, the top uh, standard rifle and carbine questions. 
Uh, I'm going to drop off and we're going to go into some situational questions here, right? Some situational questions. And again, this is, this is what I take uh, to a promotion board. Uh, I, I dug these myself. I, I made these myself. Um, and I, I, this is how I roll. I think most board members do something similar. Um, situational question number one. You are preparing to conduct basic rifle marksmanship training, or PMI, which is preliminary marksmanship instruction. How will you resource, prepare, and execute this training? So this is something that, you know, especially as a young sergeant, you know, there's a couple of things that we do all the time, right? We know that we're going to be leading PT every single day, right? We know that things like PMCS, we are in charge of, we are responsible to execute. Things like marksmanship uh, and instruction are things that you are going to be delivering. And too many times I see where only one person is selected because only one NCO has it right. Man, that's nonsense. This is basic soldier stuff, man. We should all be able to teach PMI on the stinking spot. So how are you going, how are you going to, when you, if you have a question like this, and it could, this could relate to anything, uh, with how are you going to plan or prepare or execute some training, tie back in you know, some eight-step training model about planning training, about doing uh, rehearsals and reconnaissance, about training the trainers, about evaluating, about documenting. Throw all these things in uh, how you're going to talk. Because you're going to say things like, well, I need to uh, find the place, right, appropriate place. I need to rehearse. I need to come up with a lesson plan or instruction. I'm a resource into... Uh, CATS or, or DTMS to pull my task conditions and my standards. I'm going to train myself and rehearse with an alternate instructor. I'm going to make sure I have a sign-in roster so I can get it to DTMS afterwards so that it can be uploaded or at least documented into DTMS. And then you can go on you know, with how are you going to... And this is... You're going to get more situational questions, man. And so I'm, I'm not going to you know, spend five minutes and you don't have five minutes to spend on a situational question you, you need to keep it short and sweet and to the point right how are you going to plan and prepare you know you're going to do just that you're going to go into dtms you're going to pull the task conditions and standards and review what the standards is i'm gonna I'm talk to my training room and i'm gonna pull the stats and see what our average rifle qualification score is I'm going to build my lesson plan and have an alternate instructor. We'll rehearse and I'll build a, a book for the class and all, all of my materials, all my visuals. I'm going to secure location, make sure I have a sign-in roster. I'm going to execute the training and at the end of that training, I'll make, ensure that we have uh, a, a test, right? Make sure everybody understands exactly uh, what we're being instructed. Not only am I going to cover um, basic rifle marksmanship, which you know using optics is still basic rifle marksmanship, but I'm going to include how to use all of their optics and actually test each one. And I'll turn in my sign-in roster, and I'll make sure that the sign-in roster also goes to the range in COIC and OIC so that they know who is allowed to come onto the range and shoot some rounds on the targets. Uh, so you notice during firing that soldiers, the, that their rounds are impacting in a vertical pattern. What does that tell you and how are you going to coach your soldier? Right, so typically if, if rounds are, are being placed in a target in a vertical pattern, what it means ultimately is that soldiers are breathing while they're shooting, right? Because you can imagine... And I'm not, I'm not, use, I'm, I'm not applying the four fundamentals. And of course, in the standard question, you should know all your four fundamentals as well. A soldier asks how to achieve a natural point of aim. How do you, uh, what, what do you tell them? A natural point of aim. 
again, some of this comes back to, to what our uh, fundamentals of firing are. But how, how do you, how do you, what does that mean? How do you, how do you get a natural point of aim? If you don't think about how to put words to questions, especially situational questions, it, it, can, it can throw a loop, it can throw a wrench at you, right? How? That just hurt, right? Nobody likes a wrench in their face. So natural point of aim, man, it's too easy. I'm going to tell that soldier uh, to pick up and align their sights on the target. Aim center mass. And I'm going to tell them to close their eyes and breathe in and then breathe out. I'm going to tell that soldier to open up their eyes and see what they are focused on now. Where, where is their weapon aiming at? Because wherever that weapon is aiming after you close your eyes and release it is your natural point of aim. And if there's any changes, I'm going to tell that soldier to move their body, whether it's elbows, hips, knees, shoulders, back, feet, and not their weapon. Because if you start moving your weapon, you're going to be muscling your weapon. And that will have a change in the trajectory of your rounds. So I'll have them adjust and then close their eyes and open their eyes back up again until their natural point of aim, center mass. Because once you have that, you can pull the trigger and rounds will go on target. Hey everybody, man, I hope you enjoyed the content of this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell if you want to stay up to date on some future content. And as always, man, until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.